Hi, I'm Dave Kellen. I am a photographer at the Oregonian, and uh, in my spare time, I like to do all sorts of projects. Uh, one of which is installing a heat pump uh, to replace the gas furnace in my house. Because I wanted to do the installation myself, I went with a universal setup from a company called Mr. Cool. Since the house had existing ducting, I could replace the furnace with an air handler and connect it to a compressor unit outside. It's big. It's bigger than the furnace, but there is enough room I've measured many times. Mr. Cool was appealing to me because it offers an option specifically geared to DIYers in that you can get line sets, which are the lines that run between the two units, pre-charged with refrigerant, negating the need to have an HVAC technician charge the system. The first step was to pour a small concrete pad on the north side of my house, where the outdoor unit of the heat pump would go. Then I needed to finally drum up the courage to do something I'd been dreading hoist myself through the awkwardly placed entrance to the crawl space under the house, and crawl around running cables from the south side of the house, where the electrical panel is, to the north side, where both the indoor and outdoor units of the heat pump would be. Back one, six gauge, high amperage with a compressor, and the one I'm wearing now is sort of typical 14 gauge, little go to the airhead. So this is not the most than I've ever had working in the room. Had to waste some and, uh, probably nothing down there. Luckily, it turns out I'm not very claustrophobic. In addition to dedicated circuits for the two main components of the heat pump, I also needed to upgrade the house's electrical panel, which didn't have enough space for new breakers, and was also just generally very outdated. I had help from a licensed electrician for this part of the project. The house's existing thermostat was much too primitive to control the heat pump, and it was also located in a place that never made much sense to me, right by the mail slot, which always lets a small draft in. I drilled a hole in the wall that made the most sense in terms of a new location, and fished new thermostat cable down into the crawl space. This was actually one of the more difficult parts of the project, because the area in the crawl space I needed to access was particularly cramped. Next up was the point of no return, removing the gas furnace. I don't know how old this is. It was here when I got the house in 2008, so it's at least 15 years old. Um, it works. I did have to do a quick repair to it. I think it was last winter, um, so not a terrible time to do this. I'd waited until May to do so in case we ended up without heat for an extended time. I had the gas service disconnected and tore the furnace out, along with a great deal of ductwork that would no longer be necessary with the much taller air handler for the heat pump system. With the space cleared and all the new wiring run, I called in a favor from a menagerie of my brothers and friends to move the two heat pump components, both of which are very heavy, into position. I connected the two units to their respective power wires and to each other via more thermostat cable. I then ran the pre-charged refrigerant lines between them and connected those, being careful to tighten all the connections to the torque values specified in the instructions. For this, I used a homemade adapter and some math to let me use a torque wrench I already owned for working on cars. I opened the valves to release the refrigerant and sprayed each connection with soapy water to check for leaks, and found none. Everything was going great and I was getting close to firing it all up for a test run. Then disaster. While working on the ducting around the air handler, I could hear a very faint hiss. I double checked my connections, still no leaks. Looks good. But I could hear something going on inside the air handler, so I removed the side access panel. I quickly found the problem. A bad solder joint was leaking refrigerant. I quickly closed the shutoff valves and waited for the leak to stop. I then re-soldered the bad joint, opened the valves back up, and checked for leaks again. This time, all was well. The last thing to do before testing things out was the ducting. I was able to repurpose much of the original sheet metal and, along with several new sheets of galvanized steel, got everything hooked together and sealed up. So, it is up and running now. Um, yeah, just need to figure out the, well, attach the drain. And obviously, make a trip to the metal recycler. I flipped the two new breakers that control the system and the thermostat came to life. Um, you can see where I still need to finish patching the hole, where I tried to mount it initially, only to realize that I was 
not able to fish the wire from that location. After some time figuring out its settings, one of which I had wrong initially, we had warm air coming out of the vents on a cool evening, and the inside temperature soon stabilized at what I'd set the thermostat for. Over the next few days, we had a chance to test out the heat pump's air conditioning as temperatures rose into the 90s for the first time of the year. Other than a couple window units, the house hadn't had any form of AC before, and the difference was incredible. The air from the vents was ice cold when the system was running, and the overall temperature in the house held steady at a comfortable 70 degrees, day and night. Everything seems to be working as it should, and the house is vastly more pleasant to be in than it has been during past heat waves. So effectively, it's all done, it's up and running, and it's working great. I still have a big pile of stuff to take to the scrapyard when I get a chance, and I'm waiting on an order of uh, a line set cover that uh, will attach to the house and cover the refrigerant lines. That'll be the last step of the project. Not thrilled with the Mr. Cool customer service uh, when I contacted them about that leak. They weren't very helpful. Um, but hopefully any future dealings with them will be easier. It does have a 10 year warranty, although apparently by repairing that leak myself, I ran afoul of them in this case, but it does seem to be working. I may have a HVAC tech come out and just double check the charge level because I'm not sure how much refrigerant I lost before I made the repair. Cost wise, I think all in like just under $6,000. Obviously a, a good amount of money, more money than I think I've spent on almost any car I've ever owned, but if you were to cost out having the furnace replaced professionally, if we just waited until it died, or that plus the installation of a standalone air conditioning system it would have been a lot more money. Um, my time is free, of course, so doing myself saved there. And also I'm now familiar with literally every part of it, so I should be able to maintain it uh, as time goes by. Hopefully, for a while though, we can just enjoy a comfortable house, a non-existent gas bill, and the knowledge that in some small way we've taken a step toward reducing our impact on a changing climate.